Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on how to deal with problems involving cubes and nets of cubes. If you find this lesson useful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to check out my live lessons every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Don't forget to look at the books and the online resources on the RSL Educational website and to check out the links in the video description. The worksheet for today's lesson is also linked there. Let's get started. What I'm going to focus on here is the sort of exam technique that you might use to get these questions right, even if you don't have a fantastic spatial imagination, even if you can't form the cube in your mind and see it rotated every way. If you use these methods, you should still be able to get these questions right. A really good place to start is with the central figure on our cube net. And the reason for that is that we can see all of the other figures that border it. And that makes it really easy to use that to rule out some possibilities. So let's look for every place where we see that figure in our answers. We can see it here. So now let's look at what's next to it. Well immediately we can see this thing next to it that doesn't appear anywhere in our net. So this here cannot be an answer. We also see it here. Now if we look at this carefully we can see that this shorter edge here is actually on this side and this longer section here is to the right. So we can see that this has been flipped around through 180 degrees. Now pointing towards the longer part of this figure is this here. Does that appear to be what's going on in C? So everything's been flipped round, so this here should match this. And at a glance, it does appear to. So this is certainly an option. Now what about this here? Again, everything's been flipped round, so if it's above our central figure on this cube, then it must be below it on the net, so it should be here. Do we see a similar shape? Yes, it looks like it. We can see this hoojit here. It seems to match up with that there. So C looks like a plausible option, something that might give us our answer. Now let's have a look at option D, where again we can see our central figure. Now it isn't absolutely clear which way around it is. It looks to me as though it's the same way around as in the net. It looks to me as though this is the longer end and this is the shorter end. But we can't be absolutely certain of that because of the perspective. Let's just think about what's next to it. We can see that this is next to it, which clearly matches this here. So then this must be the figure above it on the net. But in fact, above it here, we have a triangle with a sort of moon inside it or jelly bean. And that isn't what we've got here at all. So D can't be the answer. So far we haven't really done any very clever mental rotation in three dimensions. We've just looked logically at what is next to what in the net and on our cubes. Now let's go back to our other possibilities. We saw that C looked reasonable. Let's have a look at A again. We don't have this on it, but what do we have? Well, we have this figure which matches this, and we have this figure which matches this, and we have this figure which matches nothing whatsoever. So A cannot be the answer either. And so we're left with C as the only possibility. And in fact, all we've had to do with C is check that broadly speaking, the right figures seem to be on the correct faces of the cube. And we haven't needed to go into any more detail than that because we've been able to eliminate the other options for various reasons. So if you're systematic and intelligent about it, you can get away with remarkably little spatial awareness. Now let's have a look at this. You can see if you look down here that this face of the cube seems to have got slightly twisted in my design, so it isn't quite true. Let's ignore that. As we did before, let's focus on the central figure here and look for where that turns up on our cube. So we can see that this is a figure with a relatively thin circle and then one thicker line and one thinner line that cross it. If we look at cube A, we can see that that figure is up here and it has this here directly adjacent to it, below it we might say. And that same figure seems to be here but above it. So everything seems to have been flipped round through a half turn, 180 degrees. Now we need to look at this here, which seems to match this. Now this doesn't seem to have been flipped round through 180 degrees because it is 
broadly speaking, to the right of our central figure, just as it is here. Whereas if everything had been flipped round to 180 degrees, we'd expect it to be somewhere over on the left-hand side. So this doesn't work. What about B? Well, option B has got our favourite figure twice, yet it only appears once in our net over here. So again, option B cannot be the answer. Option C has it here, and it has the helicopter landing point above it, as we see here, and it has this thing to the left of it round the corner, as we see here. So this looks quite plausible. We haven't looked at it in detail yet, but we can certainly leave that one in for the moment. Now we come to option D. Here's our figure here, and as I said, we're ignoring the fact that the top is slightly skew if that's just a design and printing error from me, I'm afraid. So we have this next to it. That's above it here, so we can see that everything has been twisted around slightly, and we can see that this is next to our central figure, and indeed on the net it is next to it here. We can also notice that these two here are next to each other, and if we folded our net together, these two edges would meet. So indeed, those two figures would in fact find themselves next to each other on the cube. So this looks quite plausible. We're left with C and D, both of which at first glance seem like reasonable options. Let's look at C again in a bit more detail. One useful clue in the net is that our central figure that we've been focusing on has one thicker line and one thinner line. So let's think about where those lines are pointing. On this cube here, we have these two faces next to each other. So these two edges here have folded together. And pointing into the gap between them is the thicker line that intersects this figure here. But if we look down at our cube here, we can see that the thicker line is up here, and it's actually the thinner line that's pointing into that corner. So this doesn't appear to match. This cannot be the right answer. Now, if we look at this cube down here, because of where that figure is, it's actually almost impossible to tell which is the thinner line and which is the thicker one. So we can't really consider that. Let's double check option D just by checking the order in which these faces appear on the net. So let's label our central figure A and let's label that A here. Then going in a clockwise direction, we have B, which is the helicopter landing cross. So we can label that B. And then, of course, these two edges are going to meet, so we come round clockwise to C, and that's still here in a clockwise direction. So things seem to be matching in the correct order. And we've been able to rule out all the other options, so we can feel really confident about choosing option D. This is our last one. We've got some differently coloured, patterned and positioned stars. And again, we're going to look at the central figure, which is our white star here. So let's look for that. We can find it here in A, and next to it there are a black star and a grey star. And looking at the original net, it does have a black star and a grey star next to it. So without looking in more detail, let's consider that as something not to rule out at this point. Again, the same thing applies to option B. We've got the white star, a black star, and a grey star. Option C has the white star next to a black star and a striped star. And we can see that it is next to a striped star and a black star, but these could not fold to be next to each other, because they're actually opposite each other across the white star. They can never end up touching. They must be on opposite sides of the cube. Whereas here we have the striped star and the black star touching edges. So this cannot be right. Option D. We've got the white star next to the stripy star, which is here, and the dotted star. OK, that looks kind of plausible. So here we've only been able to rule out one cube for really obvious reasons. Now let's consider in a little bit more detail. Let's look at option A, and let's consider the white star again. We can see that it's pushed down into this corner here, and there's a big space up here. And that corner that it's pushed into is near to the face with the black star on it. 
If we look at the net, it's pushed down into this corner, which is not towards the black star. So this is wrong. What about option B? We can see that the white star is pushed down into this corner, which is near to the face with the grey star on it. But here it's pushed down into this corner, which is not the corner towards the face with the grey star on it. So this doesn't match either. So if we haven't made any mistakes, we can be sure that our answer is option D. Let's just double check it using the same method. So here we can see that the white star has been pushed into the corner near to the dotted star and the striped star. Looking at the net, again we can see it's pushed into this corner, which is indeed near to the face with the dotted star and the face with the striped star. So D looks like a plausible match, none of the others do, and so we can confidently choose that as our answer, even without double, triple, quadruple checking every possible aspect. I hope that was useful. Cubes are easy once you know how. Please check out the links in the video description. Please subscribe to this channel. Check out the resources on the RSL Educational website, including my extensive stock of 11 plus books and my 11 plus lifeline online service. And I hope to see you back next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next easy 11 plus live lesson. Bye bye.